good to see you today. We're so glad that you joined us. We're going to take some time today to worship and study the Bible and a couple other fun things. So hop up on your feet because we're going to go ahead and get started with worship. It just like that, sing it even louder. And oh, all of this for your glory. Hallelujah, lift your voice and sing. Oh, all of this for your glory. Let's take it up, ready? Here we go. And oh.
What's going on CT kids? My name is Joshua and I'm here to help you with the new memory verse. The memory verse we're doing today is in 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. And it says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. So on the count of three, we're gonna say, lay that track. One, two, three, lay that track. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith and your purity. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Great job, guys. Keep practicing. Bye. Hi, friends. I am so excited to be sharing the word of God with you. Today, we are going to talk about Jonathan and David and their friendship. We're going to watch a video, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. Slapstick Theater. David and Jonathan. This is Jonathan, hey. who was the son of King Saul and a warrior in Israel's army. This is David, hey. who would later become the king of Israel. Huh? After David defeated a great giant, he was brought before King Saul and he met Jonathan. They immediately became friends. Yeah. yeah. And Jonathan made a pact with David and showed him that by giving David his robe and weapons. Oh, hang on. From that time on, David was successful in all he did. Uh! And King Saul became jealous of David and very angry. Uh. Saul wanted his servants and Jonathan to get rid of David. But because Jonathan loved his friend David, he warned David of what his father was planning. Oh, oh. Jonathan went to his father, King Saul, and talked him out of harming David. Mm. Okay. For a time, David was safe from King Saul's plans. Phew. But not long after, the king's jealousy and anger came back, and he tried to kill David. Whoa! David got away, and his friend Jonathan came to help him. Hang on, eh? Jonathan tried again to talk his father out of hurting David. No. But now King Saul was convinced he needed David to be gone. Jonathan was angry and sad that his father would not let his friend go. Ugh. And he knew that David would have to go into hiding and run from King Saul. Jonathan met David one last time, and the two cried and said their goodbyes. <laughs> Jonathan told David to go in peace and that they had a special bond in God's name. Then David left and lived a life on the run from King Saul, and Jonathan returned to the town. Even though they were separated, the two were the best of friends and were an encouragement to one another. Yeah! What an awesome story. When we study the Bible, we do it in three steps, observation, interpretation, and application. Can you say that with me? Observation, interpretation, and application. Great job. Observation is what do we see happening in the story. Interpretation is what does this mean? And application is how can I apply this to my 
light. That's observation, interpretation, and application. In this story, which can be found in 1 Samuel chapter 18, we see that Jonathan and David meet, and Jonathan is such a dedicated and loyal friend to David. Jonathan promises that he is going to be dedicated to David, and that's exactly what happens. So for our observation, we see that Jonathan promises that he's going to be a trustworthy friend to David, and that's exactly what he does. For our interpretation, we see that Jonathan and David were good friends that encouraged each other. They encouraged each other to do the right thing, and even when times got hard, Jonathan and David were still good, godly friends. Jonathan helped David when danger was at his door, when Saul was trying to harm David, and David did not encourage Jonathan to do the wrong thing. David could have easily said to Jonathan, Jonathan, you should leave your dad. We should get back at your dad. But instead, Jonathan and David were good friends that encouraged each other to do the right thing. So for our application, we can see that that is the kind of friendships that God wants us to have. He wants us to have godly friendships that encourage us to do the right thing. Now, we have all kinds of friendships, but God wants us to choose to make sure that our friendships are the kinds that honor God. We want to have friends that are going to encourage us to listen to our parents instead of ignore our parents, to obey our teachers instead of not listening to what they say, to be kind to others that won't make fun of other people or even say bad things about us. We want to choose friends that choose their words carefully and that are choosing to be kind and that follow Jesus because we want friends that will encourage us in our walk with God. God did not create us to be all by ourselves. He created us to be in community with each other and he wants us to be in community and to be in friendships with other godly people that are going to encourage us to pray and to worship and to treat others well, to treat others like God treats us, which is with such kindness and forgiveness and so much love. And that's what God wants for us. He wants us to have friendships that are marked by love. I have an example for you. Now here I have two different kinds of Play-Doh. I have a purple one and I have a red one. Now, when we think about friendships, I think about how we mix together. Now, you might have friends that don't encourage you do, to do the right thing. And what you might think is that it's okay, even if I hang with those friends, even when I mix with those friends, I'm not going to listen to them. I'm not going to be encouraged to do the wrong thing. Instead, I'll just be able to hang with them. We'll laugh, we'll joke, and then I'm going to separate. But can you imagine trying to separate this Play-Doh? Even though you might get some of it, the more the more you mix, the more it gets harder and harder to actually separate. So God wants us to choose friends that that are going to encourage us because our friendships, they impact us. They affect us. Whether we have good friendships or bad friendships, they affect us how we feel on the inside. They affect the actions that we take. They affect everything that we do. And God says that our friendships are important to us and our friendships are important to him and our friendships are important in the way that we think and the way that we act. It says that our friendships can lead us down the right path or the wrong path. And so we want to choose friendships that lead us down the right path because you see, like, can you imagine trying to untangle all of this red from this purple? It would be really hard to do, maybe even impossible because the more we hang out with people, we mix together with them and they impact us. We change them and they change us. We might just think, oh, I'm just going to be a good influence for them, but they're not going to be a bad influence on me, but that's just not true. So God wants us to choose friendships that are going to impact us and affect us in a positive and a good 
way. So let's pray and ask God to help us to have godly friendships and to choose godly friendships. Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you, God, that you give us godly friendships, that you give us friends, Lord, just like Jonathan and David to encourage us to be godly. And we ask, Lord, that you would help us to have the courage to say no to wrong things, to have the courage to influence our friends to do the right thing, God, and to choose well, to choose our friendships well. And God, I pray for anyone that's feeling lonely, that's feeling like they don't have any friends, God, I pray that you would provide godly friendships for them, Lord Father, that they would be able to grow together and they would grow closer to you because of it, God. So we love you, we thank you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I know that God is going to continue to give you wisdom in your friendships and to provide godly friendships. I love you guys so much and I hope you have such a blessed and an awesome day. Thank you so much for joining us today, friends. We hope you got to learn and just have fun with us today. We'll see you next time. Bye.